Karen, would you please introduce your speaker? Objectives. Good morning again, fellow Toastmasters. Kate Beyond, The Illusion of Happiness is the title of her presentation, and it is writing a speech with purpose. Now, according to this evaluation form, I see something on here that is new, the pathway. So I had to look it up. It speaks of a specific purpose statement. And it said it should state the main topic of the speech. It should grab our attention and engage us immediately. The project purpose of this is to learn or review basic methods for writing the speech with a divine, I'm sorry, a divine purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topic. We're looking forward to hearing the illusion of happiness. I'd like to introduce our first speaker for today. You've already heard the timing of five to seven minutes and following up on Sharon's information, our speaker is Kate Meowen. Kate is in presentation mastery level three. Kate likes going against the flow and breaking biases and stereotypes. Today, she wants to convince us that happiness is an illusion. The illusion of happiness is a very controversial topic. And especially for that, Kate likes discussing it and challenging people to think what happiness means to them. Please join me in welcoming Presentation Mastery Level 3, Kate Meowen. Be happy. I want to be happy. We hear that all the time. But what happiness is? For someone, it is a piece of bread. For other one, it may be a new Lamborghini. Also, I guess you have heard people saying during the pandemic, we were so happy before the pandemic, but we didn't realize that. Or when I buy a house, I will be really happy. Did you notice that we speak about happiness differently and mainly in the past and in the future, but not in the present. The idea of happiness is like a Trojan horse, which we receive radios, considering as a gift, but it may be a real deception. So if we introduce the concept of happiness into the appreciation of our lives, this concept may really invalidate our lives. Hello, Toastmasters. I'm challenging myself today to convince you that happiness is an illusion. Also, I'm giving you an alternative. If we don't experience happiness, what do we experience? So let's talk about happiness as an illusion. <clears throat> Longing for happiness as we have been exhorted since childhood, we become victims of this passion elevated to the rung of personal obligation. You are obliged to be happy. The pursuit of illusory, ha illusory happiness perceived as something existential and global eclipses the small joys of every day and prevents us from seeing the common goods and simple pleasure of our lives. In a somewhat paradoxical way, the pursuit of happiness makes us unhappy because we feel all the time that we haven't achieved that supreme illusion, illusionary happiness yet. It is enough to understand and accept that happiness is an illusion, a myth, to initiate liberation of its toxic spell. Just as we become adults and no longer expect naive gifts from Santa Claus, we should have no longer illusionary hopes. 
I'll give you a trick. If we stop looking at happiness as a real phenomenon, we stop having unsubstantial expectation, which cause confusion and disappointment. This therapeutic trick manages to save us from a crucial existential frustration. Now, the alternative. If we do not experience happiness, then what do we experience? The response is sensations and emotions. Most human sensations and emotions are universal, characteristic of people from different cultures, genders, and ages on all continents. Even facial expression are common. Joy, sadness, anger, amazement, ecstasy, etc. With slight individual differences, emotions are experienced and understood equally by everyone. But let's go back. What about happiness? We discovered that there is no single representation of that, where each individual has his mental picture of happiness, his faith about it. For some, an expression of happiness is to be healthy, for others to be rich, etc. The list of individual happiness is endless, like a list of hobbies, or rather, it is a list of desires, dreams, and expectations. Going a little bit into philosophy, wisdom, pleasure, and bodily sensation, knowledge, friendship, social ideal, altruism, avoidance of pain, those are just... <clears throat> just some of the elements by which philosophers conditioned happiness. Despite that, in the philosopher's opinion, these elements contradict each other, and each piece is not enough to gain happiness. In short, even in philosophy, there is no common explanation for happiness. There is none. In conclusion, unlike the sensations and emotions, which are natural and common for everyone, happiness is a representation built culturally and socially under the impact of traditions and trends of the era. So happiness itself, it's an artificial product of the times. It is an invention. Leave your sensations and emotions here and now. Enjoy your moment when they, your moments when they happen. And don't chase illusionary happiness in the future and you'll not regret the happiness in the past. Your happy moment is happening right now. Thank you, back to you. Our first evaluator is uh, Sharon Giles, who is going to evaluate Kateman's speech. Please welcome Sharon. Fellow Toastmasters, and especially Kate. The illusion of happiness. Kate, I'm going to tell you what I heard, what I saw, and how I felt. Your title immediately got my attention. I have read several books regarding the illusion of happiness. You excelled at delivering and informing the audience with a well-organized speech. 
you may want to work on your pacing and your volume. Clarity, I gave you a three. Your eye contact, I gave you a four. You started out immediately with gestures that brought us all in, opening your arms wide, welcoming the audience in. You told the audience the difference in how we put happiness together. Is it for real or is it just emotion? I could feel your comfort level. I believe that the general speech purpose was made. Now, I made some notes only because for me, I needed clarity on many things that you were saying. And it's only because of your accent, Kate. You lowered your voice in areas where I did not understand what you were saying. It didn't take away from what you had already said. I just would have loved to have heard exactly what your words were saying. Your facial expression told me that it was all good. And I've heard you before, so I knew it was all good. I'm not taking away, but I am adding in since many of the people here in this Toastmasters Club speak clear English. I ask that when you speak, that you not silence yourself so low that it's muffled. That would help your speech and it would certainly help those who are evaluating. I, being a gracious person, enjoyed your speech. I look forward to hearing the next one.